This workshop is about searching for colleges and creating a college list. A great place to start is by using some of the search tools that are available on the internet. These tools are a great starting point. Um, they'll give some general information. However, um, they are not the end all be all. To get the most up to date information about colleges, students will then have to visit college websites. Listed here are two search tools that I often use. Um, there are things that I like about each one. I recommend using both, um, not just one, and perhaps you have others that you use as well. There are lots of them out there. So I'm gonna show students how to use both of these tools. I would start by Googling it. College Board. If you have a College Board account, it's beneficial to log in first. If you don't, it's not a problem. Click here and under Access College Search. The reason that I say logging in is beneficial is because if you're logged in, you can save colleges to your college list if you like them. If you're not logged in, it won't save anything. So here are the criteria that you can put in for a search. Do not fill in all these criteria because the search will become so narrow that you'll get zero results. The ones that are the most important to put in are type of school. Most students know if they want a two-year or a four-year. However, some students are open to both, so you can check one or both. I recommend checking private and public here and leaving for-profit out. Most students have an idea of which location they're interested in. Um, right here, you can choose by region. You can select an entire region or right under you have states and territories. You can select as many states and territories as you like. You can select um, the entire region of New England, for example. But if you're also interested in um, California or Florida because you have family there, maybe you wanna put that as well. One thing to think about when you're thinking about location is that if you are going to a place that's uh, farther than driving distance, that means you will be buying plane tickets to come home to visit, um, which can become expensive, especially if you're hoping to come home for Thanksgiving and Christmas, um, as well as other school breaks. Majors and learning environment is the next one that I recommend putting. If you have a major in mind that you'd like to study. If you don't, you can leave this empty. You don't need to be sure of the major that you want, um, but just putting it in ensures that you're looking at colleges that offer some majors that you would be interested in. So let's see, I'm going to put computer science. Nice. Yeah. You can put more than one major as well. And then you can optionally put in sports and activities. Um, I only recommend putting this in if this is a deal breaker to you, if it has a certain sport or a certain activity such as band. By sports, they're only referring to um, the varsity sports. They're not referring to intramural or club sports here. So only if you plan on playing division one, two or three varsity sports, you would put that in. And that's all I put in typically for a college board search. Um, so we get 76 results, which is a good number. It's not too many and it's not too few. Um, so these are the colleges. It lists the name of the college as well as the location. If I was logged in, I could click add to your college list. Um, and it will tell you if there's more than one page. So we have four pages of results here. So I'm going to click on a college to show you a few things that I recommend checking out. I will click on this one. Again, you have the option to add it to your list if you're liking what you see. Um, the first page is at a glance. Um, this little paragraph is helpful in letting you know what the setting of the university is. Is it rural? Is it urban? The website is always right here, and that's where we will visit next, as well as some quick facts. Um, deadlines. Um, 
Every college has their own deadlines of when applications and financial aid applications must be turned in. There is no universal deadline. So this is important to keep track of. Majors and learning environment. Um, it will give you the most popular majors and then a list of all majors. Again, this is something that um, you can get the most up-to-date information on, on, on the college's website because if they add a major one year, College Board may not be so fast to update that number. Campus Life is going to give you an idea of the breakdown of the student body as far as how diverse it is, um, the ethnic and gender breakdown in state, out of state, um, housing, activities, different um, activities and clubs, sports, etc. Um, applying is the tab that you will use to see how difficult or not difficult it is to get into this college and it'll help you categorize the college as either a reach college a reach college is a college that would be difficult for you to get into a match college which is a college that um, you have a good shot at getting into you're a good match um, but you can't guarantee that you get in or a safety a safety college is a college that you are very confident that you would get into and so you have the stats here of how many students apply and how many are admitted. And this number is very important. This is a very selective university. 30% of applicants are admitted. 30% um, may not seem that low, but it is quite low. I would say that anything under 50% is a selective college. If these numbers are below 20%, those colleges really are a reach for anybody because their acceptance rate is so low that it's really um, difficult to predict if you would get in or not because most applicants are very qualified. Um, so these tabs down here, it'll tell you what's important, um, what they look at when they're evaluating applicants. Um, one thing I look for is the standardized test scores. I like to see where this falls. It's under considered for this college, meaning that you do not need to send standardized test scores such as the SAT or the ACT. If it's important or very important, it means that they're required. Um, application requirements. Again, this is really information that you are best seeking off of the website of the college. Academics and GPA will give you a rundown of um, what they're looking for in a student as far as high school coursework. You can see that Brandeis is asking students to take four years of a language. Um, that's more than typical. However, many colleges now are looking for three to four years of a language. So students were thinking about college. It is recommended that they continue with their language for at least three years. Um, the other number that I find, well, both of these, um, the percentage of students and where they fall um, in their class. And then these are the GPAs of incoming freshmen. I like to use this information to help students categorize the school as a reach, match, or safety. You can see that at Brandeis, most applicants are being accepted with um, high grade point averages. And they can help you recalculate your grade point average here. So if a student falls down here, down here, or even here, Brandeis would be categorized as a reach. Um, in these, maybe a match. And if it was above, then that would be a safety. If it's a college that requires SAT, or even if it's optional, but you're thinking about sending your scores, you want to click on this and you want to look at the average scores. So these are the middle 50%. If your scores fall above the middle of 50%, it's safe to send them. They would probably help in the application process. If they fall below, definitely do not send. And if they fall somewhere in between, I would do some more research. I would contact the college and ask if these numbers are up to date and ask them for some suggestions on deciding to send or not. Um, if they're toward the lower end of the average, um, typically it would be safer to not send the scores. You'll notice that at an SAT optional college, the average scores are very high, and that's because only students who get very high scores are choosing to send their scores. Over here on paying, you will get the cost of the college. Um, I would suggest completely ignoring the sticker price because that is not what most students pay. 
you'll this is a private college and so the price is very high if you're looking at massachusetts public state colleges you'll see the price is a lot lower however um, sometimes private colleges have a lot more money to give so a student can end up going to a private college and paying less money than they would have at a public college the number that i suggest looking at is over here financially by the numbers they give this pie chart and they tell you the percent of need met. This number is really important. The closer to 100 it is, the better the financial aid um, because a family will fill out financial aid applications and the college will determine how much need they have. And then they'll think about how much need they're willing to meet through grants, scholarships, and loans and how much the family would have to come up with. So for an expensive private college, I recommend looking at colleges that have a very high percentage. Um, really over 90 is great. A um, little bit lower may be okay, um, but I wouldn't go too much lower. For a public college or a college that you would commute to, live at home and commute to, um, it's okay for that number to be lower because you're saving elsewhere. So that is... Um, the rundown of what you would get here. If you like the college, save it to your college list, either in College Board or write it down. And then go to the website and check it out. So this is a college website. Students really have to spend a good amount of time visiting college websites and just looking around to become familiar with how college websites are laid out and where to find the information that they need. All of the information is here and to make a college list you have to become a good researcher so i'm going to check out some things on this website um but again this website's new to me so i'm just going to be searching admission and aid admission is the part of the website that you would go to if you want to learn how to get in what type of student they're looking for what are the steps to apply and so down here they give me some more options um, Undergraduate admissions or first year students or prospective students are the words that you will be looking for as a student who is coming right out of high school. So I will click on undergraduate admissions. See, they have virtual tours. Many colleges are doing that right now. Um, they talk about their test optional policy right here that you might want to click on. So they talk about how they look at SAT and ACT scores should you submit them. Some colleges that um, give you the choice require something else, an essay or something. So I can see down here that you have the option of scores, exams, or a paper. So it's really important to do your research on if they don't require test scores, do they require something else? Um, so we have dates and deadlines. We have admitted students, first year applicants. Have a look there. So they have a nice um, menu over here, an application checklist, academic requirements, deadlines. I love all this. Um, look at academic requirements because I want to know off the bat if I'm going to qualify to apply. So it tells me how they evaluate students here, um, and they tell me what courses I need to have had in high school. An adequate course in preparation for Brandeis should include four years English, three years math, three years science three years social science, and two to three years of a foreign language. So here's a good example of the information on College Board being inaccurate. Um, College Board was suggesting that Brandeis was looking for four years of a language um, while they look um, for, for two to three years um, and four could be beneficial, um, four is not a requirement. So that's useful. So if I'm liking Brandeis and I'm deciding I want to apply or I might want to apply, I want to check the application checklist. In making a college list, once it's developed, a student should create their own checklist of what is required by each college they're applying to. They'll tell you what type of application. There's a link to the common application, which is one application that many colleges use. If they don't use the common application, there will be a link to whatever application they use. It might just be an application on their website, or it could be another common application, um, such as the Coalition app. Copies of transcripts. This is a piece that your school counselor will send either via the common application or email or mail. That is why you have to tell your counselor where you're applying and fill out the transcript request form. Um, test optional policies. So they tell you here, scores, 
other test scores from other exams or a graded paper. So if you're an 11th grader or even a 12th grader applying here, you want to start to save graded analytical papers in case you want to use that as a writing example. Um, Mid-year report, that's for the middle of the year they want. If you apply before the mid-year, they'll want updated grades. A letter of recommendation from a teacher who has instructed you in a core academic course. It's very important to read about letters of recommendation because some colleges are specific in who they're looking for to write these letters. So in the example of Brandeis, they want someone who's taught you in a core academic course. Some colleges want two letters um, and some of them get pretty specific. A school report and a letter of recommendation from a secondary school official. That would be a guidance counselor, a school counselor. And again, they would send that through Common App or mail or email, depending on what application the college uses. $80 application fee. All colleges have an application fee. Because you go to Holyoke High School, you have free lunch, which means that through the Common App, you qualify for a fee waiver. So you will not need to pay fees to apply to any colleges through the Common App. As free lunch students, you also got SAT fee waivers through the College Board, which means you can print additional fee waivers out of College Board and use those for the colleges that are not in the Common App. So you are likely to pay a very few to no application fees. Um, and then it goes on um, with information about um, different groups of students. So, when you're looking at these application checklists, you'll notice that some colleges recommend or require an interview. If it's recommended, um, I would do that. It helps to show your interest, and it's good to schedule those early in your senior year because they often book up pretty quickly. So that is admissions. Um, if you want to find out um, what majors a college has, you might want to check out academics. Um, and they'll break it up into majors and minors, or sometimes they call them schools or divisions or programs. They kind of split up majors and minors often um, into categories. So we have a list of majors and a list of minors. And you can click on any one of them to learn more. It's important to note that some majors are more difficult to get into than others at some colleges. If that's the case at a college, they'll usually mention it somewhere on the admissions page that their competitive majors are such and such. Nursing is always a competitive major. Um, physical therapy and occupational therapy are always competitive majors. And there are other majors that are competitive, maybe at some schools and not at others, such as computer science or um, engineering. Um, they also talk here about study abroad, internships. If I was considering this college, I would want to know about all this stuff um, about student life. Um, this is talking about dorms and clubs, um, diversity. I would want to know about that. Um, tuition fees. I do want to show families something. Tuition calculator. Okay. So they are going to calculate what you would be charged. Um, Okay, I'm looking for something called the net price calculator. Um, all colleges have on their website a net price calculator, and it allows families to put in some information about their financial situation and get an estimate of how much financial aid they would give. I recommend doing this and making a college list because on your college list, you also want financial safeties, which are colleges that your family can afford if you're accepted. Okay, net price calculator. Here we go. So you click on this. Um, it may take a little while because you do have to put in financial information. Parents might want to have taxes handy if they filed taxes and get started. Um, but if you're seriously considering a college, you definitely want to try the net price calculator to understand if it's affordable. It's important that students have affordable colleges on their college list because it can be very shocking if you're accepted to a bunch of colleges and then you receive your financial aid packages and none of them are affordable. So that is college websites. The other college search tool that I like, and I'm only going to show you one um, piece of it, it's the College Match, which is on the College Data website. Again, I just Google it. I don't save the website. Okay, so I will select a region. It's similar 
to College Board. I don't find it as user friendly. I skip all that. Um, I skip all that. So the reason I like this is because you can search by financial need met. So let's say I only want to look at colleges with really good financial aid. I'll put 90 or higher. You can search for this on College Board, but they have it in, in increments of 20%. So you can only search for 80% or 100%. This website allows me to go 90%, 95%. Um, they have sports there. If you want to select one, I would select a major. If you think you want a major, I'm going to do biology and find. So I put in very few criteria. I'll probably have a lot of results. Okay, let me see. So I have 58 results. Um, so I will click on um, Holy Cross, which is in Worcester. And again, it'll give you all that basic information, just like the College Board. And here's the number I'm looking for. Average percent of need met, which is 100% Holy Cross. So this is a great college for financial aid. It's important to note that the colleges with the best financial aid are often the most difficult to get into. There are some that get great financial aid that are not as difficult to get into, just something to keep in mind. But again, there are the state colleges and also on um, commuting colleges that um, may not be as difficult to get into, but are affordable. Okay, so we're back here. So again, this, this slide is just a reminder about some of the words you're looking for uh, for admission, undergraduate or first year perspective. And that's where you find out what they're looking for in an applicant and how to apply. Under academics, you're going to find um, they might be called programs or majors or schools. And under student life, you'll find out about dorms, sports, clubs and opportunities, and diversity. This just speaks a little bit to what I talked about as far as having a college list that includes safeties and match colleges that you like. You want to make sure that they are real options, not just ones that you throw on your list to have them. It's okay to have REACH colleges. You just don't want all of your colleges to be REACHs. Um, you saw I was Googling the college search sites. Um, you can also Google things like um, good business schools in Massachusetts or most diverse schools in the Northeast. Um, there are lots of great articles out there and different websites with different lists about college. So college search engines are not the end-all be-all. You can also find your own ways to research. And no Q&A today because this is a recorded session. If you're interested in asking questions, please attend one of the live sessions. Um, the upcoming sessions are on the College Counseling website and in the Google Classroom. Thanks for listening.